Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykant, Superintendent of Schools. I often tell our principals that student and school safety and security is our number one priority. Joining me today to talk about student safety and school security is uh, Fire Chief Paul Buckley. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Principal Mike Schwinden from uh, Mitchell. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Schwinden. And uh, Police Chief Phil Droning. Thank you. Thanks very much for being here. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a reality of our times that we have to spend an awful lot of uh, energy and, and focus on, on thinking a lot about student safety and security. And I was wondering as we began uh, if, if maybe each one of you could share an anecdote or a perspective about uh, some, some aspect of school safety that you, you remember or that you've had an experience with uh, to kick off the conversation. Paul, uh, you, you had one you were mentioning. Sure, uh, at least in a leadership role, uh, Dan, and thanks for having me here, I appreciate it. Uh, about nine years ago, we had a, a natural gas line that ruptured and caught on fire. It was only <coughs> literally 100 yards away from the Pollard School. Um, the fire was large, the danger was large. We evacuated buildings and uh, homes in the neighborhood. And it wasn't until I was, you know, several minutes into the scene that um, the town manager reminded me that school's getting out in a few minutes. And like I said, the Pollard was 100 yards on the road, so now the focus was on not so much the fire and the gas leak, it was the several hundred students and what's going to happen if they start coming down the street. So it was the first time that we, <coughs> that I used a shelter in place order, um, and that just kind of makes, reinforces the fact that we have to keep the schools as one of our number one priorities when we're thinking about safety. And when you say shelter in place, what do you mean? So well, so it wasn't a lockdown where we were afraid of an intruder in the school type situation. We didn't want the kids coming out of the school and potentially walking down the street into the wide danger zone. So we, we had a police officer and a firefighter go right to the school, meet with the principal, and keep everybody not to do the dismissal. Uh, a half hour later, we were able to dismiss the kids out the back door of the school down to DeFazio uh, Sports Complex and have the buses and parents pick kids wow. up there. Worked out very well overall. And everyone was safe. As a that was the big thing, was keeping the yeah. kids and keeping the, the public safe. How about you, Dr. Swindon? In 2007, when there was a homicide in town, and and the schools received the call from the police department uh, to go into a lockdown, which we did. And of course, the fortunate thing is that we were prepared for this. Um, not only uh, did we secure the building and put a sign outside the door, there's no entry, uh, there's a lockdown in place. Uh, the kids were sheltered inside the classroom. And in addition to that, we had paid a fee to uh, an organization in Michigan uh, for a service called Voice Shot, which allowed me to contact right. three times during this lockdown, uh, every Mitchell parent uh, let them know what was going on, that their kids were safe, that we were in a lockdown, and, it, uh, and we could arrange for an orderly dismissal. Fortunately now, the town of Needham provides for every school, uh, not this Voice Shot program, which was a fee base, was, is uh, School Messenger which we've used now two or three times. Uh, and I think we use that for uh, weather-related emergencies. Well, and I think, frankly, your experience at Mitchell really helped prompt mm -hmm. us to think about that. And before I turn this over to Phil, it's maybe an advertisement for Swift Reach. Uh, we have a reverse 911 in town, right? We do. But, we, but people have to sign on to it. Is no, you correct? don't. If you have a phone in your home, a landline in your home, that's registered with you know, AT&T or Verizon, whoever you have for uh, Comcast, we automatically pick those numbers up. You can register your cell phone or your, uh, any other you know, smartphone or other devices or your work phone. How do people just, do that? Just go to the Town of Needham website. It's right on the front page, emergency notification, or call the Needham Fire Department. We'll walk people through it. It's, it's a very easy process. Well, it's a great way to communicate, which I think will be one of the things we talk about. What's, uh, what's an experience that you remember, uh, Chief Droney? Both of these experiences. At the time, I was a lieutenant, and I responded to the gas explosion at that, uh, uh, in 06. And uh, at the time, it was uh, the Police Chief was Tom Larry, but it was an immediate uh, command center set up with the fire chief and the town uh, uh, manager, and we walked through that emergency procedure plan, the evac uh, the lockdown at the Pollard, and then uh, following a year later was the uh, uh, the unfortunate tragedy with the uh, homicide in town, which we, we had a lockdown every school in town, and uh, move forward. So those two incidences were the ones that uh, really. Uh, and reinforced our uh, emergency procedures here with school safety. Well, and you know, the, that, that incident in, in 07, uh, I think in some ways is still, uh, people remember it pretty clearly. I, I remember the day mm -hmm. and what happened and how we had to lock down the schools. And, but what I, what I really remember and appreciate is that you do these things 
because you develop Oh, it happens over time, but you need to develop relationships with key leaders <laughs> like yourselves to, to try to make good things happen out of an awful situation. And both of these were awful situations, but the relationships, the communication were really key to, to making things uh, have a positive outcome, a, as a positive outcome as you can. And I'm, it, it prompts me to think, what, what, are some of the big, what are some of the big ways that the Needham Public Schools are working with police and fire? Um, there are a whole host of different activities and, and committees. Uh, Paul, can you share some of the things that you're sure. involved in where the schools and, and, and um, public safety talk and work sure. together? And, and, you're, and you're correct. We, we put a lot of time and well-spent uh, efforts into making sure the schools are safe. But uh, the local emergency planning committee, the, what I refer to as the LEPC, is an advisory group here in town. We meet every other month. Uh, it's represented from public safety, police, fire, DPW, public health, the schools, private industry, and the hospital. And we discuss topics that are important on a community base, uh, and the schools play a big part in that. Mike, uh, Dr. Schwinden actually is a very active role in uh, local emergency planning. Yesterday, we had, a, we had a meeting and a presentation that was all about school safety and based on state guidelines. Uh, we had a meeting earlier today with, with your group, um, uh, with the public Needham schools. Needham, the Needham schools. schools Emergency Advisory. Yeah, yep. it's just another Local opportunity private, yeah. for us to talk about school safety, to talk about plans, to find out who's doing what and to meet each other. So when I show up, I know who Mike is. I know who the superintendent of schools is. I know who the principal, the headmaster is at St. Sebastian. You don't want to meet those people during an emergency. You want to meet them when you're discussing these things ahead of time. I mean, it's, it's understood that both of those agencies have people with expertise and training that we don't have but that we need. And one of the things that we did through LEPC using police, fire, and, uh, and all eight principals in town is, f as an example, is we got rid of code words during a crisis. So what do you mean? <coughs> it means that we, no school in Needham now, if there's a, an armed intruder in the building, will say, uh, Dr. Mitchell is in the building because substitutes don't know what that means. It communicates. And, and that was a code for there's an emergency. That was a code for an emergency. Situation. Different yeah. schools had different codes, yeah. phrases. We learned from our friends and uh, you know, the first responders that they're not helpful. That communication, accurate communication, and clear, is, direct communication. Is clear, direct communication is key. I think schools uh, for, for many years uh, went through those protocols of, 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 of actually trying to make some of the protocols mysterious or vague because they had to somehow be kept secretive, but mm -hmm. that was actually working against us. Detrimental, sure. That was detrimental to, to the safety of, of everybody involved. Um, Phil, one of the, I mean, there, you mentioned LEPC. There are a lot of different town-wide committees that are really focused on community safety. I mean, I'm, we were ticking off the, the uh, Needham Youth Substance Abuse Coalition mm -hmm. that um, we have police, I think uh, yes, Lieutenant Schlittler is a, uh, um, uh, Lieutenant Kramer, Lieutenant Kramer yep. members of the um, Needham Youth Substance Abuse Prevention that you were a founding member of. That was a uh, Suicide Prevention Coalition. Suicide. Coalition. That was a uh, huge, important topic at the time and now. And I think that the, the work that that group has done for the past seven years now um, has helped yeah. in the community. I think, that, you know, just the fact that they've done outreach, so now people know what resources are there. It's not in every community. We're fortunate in Needham that we have a school resource officer program uh, that really complements and supports student safety. Can you share with us what, what is our SRO? Uh, who is he? What, what happens? What, what, what's that interaction like at the school level? He acts as a... Uh, as a uh, uh, consultant in a way for or a counselor for children uh, or youth uh, to deal with some of the crisis uh, they deal with. He's a, he tries to provide crisis intervention techni techniques with, children, uh, with youth. Uh, he is actually a partner between ourselves and the school to try and open doors and break down barriers between police and uh, students. He, uh, uh, he does a very good job. He actually uh, has handled a lot of incidents at the school level or in the school before it becomes a police matter and sort of, uh, and actually is eyes and ears to any threats that come our way. So it has uh, been a positive uh, program for everyone involved. 
uh, he, I believe, I mean, he's, he's based, if you will, at the high school, but he yes. interacts with all the principals. Uh, he does. I mean, yeah. he, uh, he obviously, along with fire department, shows up at our fire drills. Um, they talk to us about what, you know, what we could do differently, what we could do better. And, uh, uh, you know, I've known Benny and worked with Benny for a long time. I mean, sometimes he'll call to tell me, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, here's some information that I want you to share with your staff. It's not necessarily something we have to share with students, but it's important that you know this. Right. He's very committed. He uh, does a great job for us. And uh, I think it's a plus for the schools as well as for... Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and on a lighter note, we have Officer Harmon who works with our school's third grade bike rodeo. The kids That's look it. forward to that bike license like uh, they yeah. do for a driver's license a few years later. I think it, you're right. It's a wonderful opportunity for the kids to work it's with a, a uniform. Well, and I, you know, Officer Harmon and, and Lieutenant uh, Kramer are very much helpful in thinking about traffic and, mm -hmm. and issues of traffic because, as we know, traffic and safety, crossing yep. guards, all of that. Uh, is a uh, uh, it's big business in Needham where we have a lot of walkers to to school to and from school and so the the police department provides that uh, incredible level of support uh, the school resource officer I think is a, is a it's a it's a wonderful and an incredibly important position I know at Needham High School and at the middle school where I know they depend on having some conversations to avoid some problems to problem solve maybe maybe perhaps uh, assisting a family in crisis and avoiding someone going into the judicial system, if that's at all Correct. possible, I know that, that that's uh, played a role. Played a role. <laughs> yeah, it, it has. Um, in, in, in fire safety, I know uh, we're, we're working with the fire department, maybe not as much as we should be, to make sure that our younger students get some fire safety training. What, what is that? Well, we do, and we have, the, we have a, uh, what we call a SAFE program, uh, Student Fire Education, and we have firefighters that are trained as educators, primarily for preschool, kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. That's where they have the best impact. And they reach out, to, they go to the different schools, they go to the classrooms, they teach things. Obviously, the programs are different based on the age differences of kindergarten versus third grade. But it's just, it's, um, and it's not always just about fire safety, it's just safety around the house. Um, and kids are very, you know, parents listen to kids more so than vice versa, I think. So when the kids learn something at a young age in school and they go home and they say to their parents, do our smoke detectors work? Do we have a carbon monoxide alarm? Do we have an escape plan? That's when it hits home it's very for powerful. us. very um, powerful. And we're fortunate, what we've focused on the past few years is the police working with the fire department on some of our school initiatives and vice versa. So for instance, if we do a fire drill now, there's usually at least a couple of police officers helping us out with that. If they do a lockdown drill or any kind of an exercise with the school, we try to get some of the firefighters involved with that. So. It helps build those relationships, and they, that way they all get to meet the school principals and some of the other administrators and teachers, and the kids. The kids like it. I enjoy going out to the fire drills, and especially with the young kids, give them a high five when they're coming back in if they've oh, done yeah. a good job. As a building principal, what are what are some of the some, what are some of the ways that you and, and your colleagues uh, lean on and depend on fire and police, uh, some of these other community organizations to to help uh, public facilities, for example, look at school safety at, at Mitchell um, and what's happened in the well, other buildings. That's a lot of organizations. I mean, I think this, the, the district-wide safety and emergency guidelines that we have right now were yeah. developed with the nurses, uh, with, the, with police, with fire. Uh, it's some great guidelines. Uh, Needham, historically, every three to four years has, t has revised this. I think uh, you've set in motion a process where we're going to take a close look at this again and revise that. Um, but it's, uh, I mean, things change. Uh, I shared the other day that in 2007, the, uh, the guidelines from the U.S. Department of Education for school uh, response to a, uh, immediate threat was one paragraph. That was 2007. In 2013, the same safety and guidelines document from the U.S. Department of Education had uh, 15 pages just on how to respond to an armed intruder. So it's, in 2014, we have to be current with what's current, what's important, what we need to do to keep kids safe. Uh, just the fact that now at Mitchell School, we have cameras on the entrance, 
you have to be buzzed in to get in during the day. The building is so much more secure than it was 13 years ago. Well, yeah, let, let's let's talk about that for a second because I think that that uh, that security system at at Mitchell that really came out of conversations that we've had over time about what what's the what's the appropriate step to take, and. Uh, what we've been able to do with public facilities is to install a, a buzzer system with a with a camera um, in uh, one or two locations at each school. Uh, the larger schools have more than that to to provide some level of security. I mean, it, there, there is no guarantee, and I think it's important to emphasize: there's no guarantee that something bad won't happen. We just can't. We can't. What what we can emphasize with parents is that we're thinking about it, we're planning for it, we're trying to develop appropriate procedures to respond. Um, hopefully we, we avoid some of the uh, tragedy that we heard out of Washington State this uh, in, in the last week or so where there was a, a shooter at a ca high school cafeteria. Um, but what, what, is the, what does that security look like, the buzzer system? So what, is it, what does that mean? How does that work at Mitchell? Well, if after uh, at, by at 820 in the morning the building is locked up tight and unless you, a uh, staff member with an electronic fob, you can't get in unless you push a buzzer, the, someone in the office has eyes on you, they identify you, they buzz you in, you come in, you go to, uh, and every school has the same sign in, visitor sign in, you usually get a visitor badge, and uh, that way we don't have unidentified people walking around the hallways. What do we practice at our schools? What what a fire practice with the, the staff, uh, police, we have lockdowns, fire drills, what does that look like? We've expanded uh, our procedures for drills, working with the police department, to include lockdown drills, to include shelter in place drills, and to discuss it with the, the not just the superintendent or a teacher or a principal might be on LAPC, but all of the um, administrators and the teachers in the school system. And then, you know, we can't be prepared for everything. It's impossible to. Um, but we can do our very best. I think we do a great job. I think we're well ahead of the curve. And I don't think we've done anything that's a knee-jerk reaction. We haven't had a major incident someplace in the country and we said, wow, we have to button down how we do things. Right. Uh, we've been working on this for s more than several years. A Chief Droney and myself for, you know, for almost three years and, be and before that myself with, uh, with Chief Larry. We've uh, worked in developing crisis response plans for every individual school in town. And uh, we've, uh, which includes the, uh, 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 diagrams, blueprints for, for the school and how to respond. We've uh, drilled on, on these uh, crisis plans and we provide a uh, level of uh, uh, practice which we didn't do 10 years you ago. Have, do you have your officers, if there is an emergency, do I, is that correct, they have a go kit for each individual they do. school that has... They, we, uh, we have a go kit to go yeah. for every school that's been developed in the last year and a half. So. I uh, feel pretty confident and they're always looked at and updated. So if we know if there's an addition or something done with the school, we want to, we have to update our, uh, our plans on that end also. We also have uh, a school crisis management team or crisis response team. Yep. And we meet every year at the beginning of the year. We've already met, I think right. the other schools have. I mean, one of the things we need to make sure is we know if there's an emergency, who's, who's in charge, and if that person isn't there, who's next, and if that person isn't there next. That team in the schools typically includes the principal, the nurse, custodian, the office staff, mm -hmm. maybe a counselor, assistant principals. But we also have, every school has a health and safety committee that's comprised of parents and the nurse and the principal. Uh, we have a lot of different perspectives on school safety, keeping school safe. It, a month doesn't go by where we don't, some group doesn't sit down and think about, are we doing everything we can Absolutely. to keep kids safe? And I think part of that has come out of experience. I mean, the Health and mm -hmm. Safety Committee has developed out of an experience with, I think, Pollard Construction years ago mm -hmm. when there was, in Hillside, when there were some problems. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes out of bad things, good things happen. And, but it, is, it has allowed Needham to be proactive, as, as you're all suggesting. Um, and providing these wraparound services, which I think are so powerful and important. Um, I just, uh, you mentioned, we've heard lockdown drill and shelter in place. So what are they and what's the difference? The shelter in place is more for an environmental type of uh, mm -hmm. uh, incident. We had a hazmat uh, uh, 
incident that's next to the school or if we had a uh, the gas main explosion. And everyone is like safe that. where safe. they are, right. shelter and stay right. But there's in no immediate place. threat. There's, right. n there's not an intruder in the school. Okay. You're not hiding. You're just staying in the building where you're in a safe environment. Okay. That's the difference with the lockdown drill is the potential for an intruder or mm -hmm. what there's an emergency. There's some sort of danger going on right there that you are you want to keep the school secure right and until we get there. And, and, and I, I, I want to maybe talk about that for a moment because I think uh, one of the things that the uh, LEPC has been talking about and the New Needham Schools Emergency Advisory Team, uh, NC, which has been working with private and public schools, including Olin College and, and public safety officials and the town manager, uh, we, we meet occasionally to talk about school safety issues. And one of the things uh, that I want to I want to pick your brains about is is this business of a of a new protocol that that we've heard and there's been some training and some conversation about and that is a protocol where uh, there are different names for them but generally as I understand it the protocol is that we um, won't just in a lockdown if there's an intruder close the doors turn off the lights secure them and sit quietly but depending on the circumstance it may be appropriate for staff and students to take action by leaving an area, which is not how mm -hmm. we've been trained. Um, talk to me about that. What, what, what is that and, and what are the conversations well, been? Well, for starters, uh, I think it's just to be more reactive to a situation than to, to just sit and wait for something to happen. Uh, it, there's, there's all kinds of different programs out there, but a lot of it is just to flee. If you have a chance to run, you run. And we do organized fire drills and everything, it goes perfectly and if the fire alarm goes off, the kids know what to do. In a situation where there might be an intruder or a shooter or someone that's going to be harm done, uh, the kids, if they can, and teachers, should just run. That's you know one of the points of the program, but there's several more. I, I think what we've uh, learned from incidents such as Columbine, which was in 99, reviewing the after action uh, uh, reports, that we could do a better job uh, on safety of the children. So we, we look at incidents, unfortunate, the tragedies that have happened in Columbine, Virginia Tech, even, you know. Uh, other incidents around the country and with that uh, we felt if you have the opportunity the whole mindset is to take different action if there's a chance to get out to get out if there's a chance if you're cornered you take a book you take anything and uh, try to distract and, 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 and protect yourself as best you can just don't sit and lock lock yourself in an area if there's an opportunity for you to get out yeah. or to do something. do something so this is so different than what we've been training students and teachers for years and and families you know by extension we although we don't explicitly teach families and parents we they're aware of what we're doing in our schools and and the other thing that happens in schools is that we have such a high level of accountability we've been training teachers you know take attendance I know mm -hmm. that at the high school when they go out into the field for a drill everyone has to take attendance what you're suggesting is something that, depending on the situation, could be different. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what is the conversation? Well, like? yeah, I, and it could be, depending on the situation and the school. I have a daughter who's a junior at the Needham High School. She and her classmates could do something different than five-year-olds at Mitchell School, Absolutely. but that doesn't say that the teacher at Mitchell School with some kids couldn't push a desk in front of a closed and locked door to actually delay the time that it would take an intruder to get in. I mean, one thing that I really appreciate about living in a in a community like Needham is I know, uh, I've heard and I, and I believe that for a fact that first responders in Needham can reach any school in just a very short period of time. And so all we need to do is try to buy a little extra time. That's correct. And you, you, you prompt me to think that what a junior at the high school can do will be different than a third grader. But the reality is, with what we're doing now, our practice right now, mm -hmm. is everyone, K through 12, follows the same procedure. We mm -hmm. lock the yeah. doors, we turn off the lights, we move away from the windows, and you know, we used to do, the co we used to mm -hmm. do colored cards. Mm -hmm. Um, but the world has changed, and even even police response now, as I understand it, is to come into a building, and and to respond, not not reading red or green cards that are put under a door. Absolutely correct. We've trained. We just had a recent uh, training uh, with the hospital actually in in September. So we did a uh, violent intruder uh, training at the new wing of the hospital. Police and fire police were responded and fire to this and, training. And the nursing, the emergency yep. room. So we, uh, and it, it went well. It was some, but the officers were just trained to go right to the threat. And that's what we're trained to do now. We don't, uh, we don't really wait the first officers on scene or heading right towards the threat. On the, uh, 
the issue with the training or the ALICE training, which is uh, what we're talking about now. It's just a different acronym, but it's all about the Homeland Security has a different name for it, and so does, uh, you know, there's just a, uh, we have a local, uh, regional name. They all mean the same thing. It's just an, for the older uh, high school children or students, it's more of a uh, swarm technique if, if, if they're cornered in an area. And for the y younger kids, it's just uh, small, just to try and get out, use a book, or just mm -hmm. get out of the way. Just just don't s sit. Some of these incidences, and as I understand it more recently in, in Washington, that these incidences with shooters happen very quickly, within minutes. Mm -hmm. Very quickly. Um, and uh, then the event is essentially over. And in those minutes, you can you can save some lives. And I guess at Virginia Tech, that that was that was the case when people just didn't lock down, mm -hmm. but they escaped through windows. Escaped through windows, set a barricade, blocked the door. Just made it, mm -hmm. it's almost like uh, target hardening. Just make it a little bit more difficult. I guess that's the word to use, and just to slow them down. A lot of these incidents we've heard. Once the intruder has heard the sirens, he knows the police are coming. A lot, some of them commit suicide, right? Right there, they've ended. They've taken their own life before we even got through the door. So a matter of, of kind of slowing down a perpetrator from from doing something. But so, Mike, you're at an elementary school. What do what do you think this would look like at an elementary school? I get it at the high school mm -hmm. where you have older yeah. students who can respond or even necessary take action, uh, lead mm -hmm. uh, something. You use the term swarm. Perhaps if they had to, as a group, uh, you know, uh, converge on someone to to disable them. I get that with high school students. Right. Uh, what do we what do we do with second graders and third graders? Right now, the, you have to leave the classroom and go in the hallway to lock the door, and so that takes time. Plus, it puts a teacher at risk. So we c found these little magnets that you can you can keep the door locked all the time. It fits over the receptacle, so the door is closed. It's, a, it's a magnetized. On it's that a magnetized side. strip. It fits over the door jam and keeps the door closed, it's locked, so in the event of a lockdown, the teacher peels that off and they're in a locked classroom. But it may be appropriate, according to this, as we learn more about this protocol, that there may be a cir circumstance where the kid should leave the room. In the case we're told now, we hadn't thought about this, we hadn't considered this as an option before, you break windows. Half of the classrooms have exterior doors in a one-story building. And run. You get outside and run. And run. Right. Chief Droney, just as, as we kind of wrap up that, that part of the conversation, uh, this protocol, uh, the, the so-called ALICE protocol, alert, lockdown, identify, counter, and, and, uh, evacuate. Um, and evacuate, that is something that Needham High School will be practicing, piloting this year to, to see how that, how that fits. And then we'll have a, a bigger conversation, Dr. Schwinden, mm -hmm. with the community and with principals about what does that mean for the other schools moving forward. We need to. Okay. And because I think there has to be some conversation and communication with families about, and the staff, mm -hmm. uh, about doing something different if, if, right. it, uh, if it makes sense. Um, what, what are some things that, as, uh, as we wrap up our conversation here, what are some things that we still have to think about that we haven't attended to in the schools? Or what's on the horizon with school safety and security? I, I know for the fire department, one of the things that we've talked about just in the past couple of days is we have a lot of newer and younger personnel working with us who are not familiar with the school building. Some of them aren't even familiar with the town of Needham. So we're going to start doing building tours during non-school hours, uh, during school vacation breaks, for instance, in February school break, and take all the on-duty personnel and go to every single school and go through the whole school just to be somewhat more familiar with the building itself. So if you get a call to go to the Mitchell School or the, or the Elliott School, you know which school it is. And if you need to get to the cafeteria, the gymnasium, the media center, the library, whatever it might be, um, you'll be somewhat more familiar with it. That's a minor step, but it's important. Um, you know, we all work in public safety, and we know what we're supposed to do, and I have some great coworkers that are fantastic. But if they're not familiar with the building, that can set them back a few minutes well, in certain again, situations. Well, and again, it's the familiarity of an emergency situation. If you've been, mm -hmm. at least you have a sense of, right. I know down that way is the gym. Right. Uh, that, that's going to help you respond more quickly. Right. And I getting more of our coworkers involved with the fire drill. So it's not just the fire inspectors and the school resource right. officer, but some of the on-duty officers and firefighters to get out there and help out during the fire drills. We have a uh, memorandum of understanding between the police chief and the superintendent of schools. We'll continue to revisit that to make sure that we're working closely together. And I, I think what I'm hearing is that uh, communication is key mm -hmm. in student and school safety. Mm -hmm.
collaboration and training between and among our staffs is, is really key. And, and Needham is, is well positioned to keep the focus on collaboration and communication with public safety in the schools, and, and we'll do that. Uh, lastly, uh, let me take this opportunity right now as, we, as I finish uh, to thank Chief Paul Buckley, who's retiring after uh, 29 years of service to the town of Needham and service to the students and the schools in Needham. We really appreciate it, and uh, we've uh, appreciated your leadership and your guidance. Thanks also to uh, Dr. Schwinden and to Chief Droney. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the conversation. Thank you.